dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly we hail. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. Welcome again to your theater of stars. Proudly we hail. United States Army and Air Force presentation. Soon to be a newer, bigger program. We'll have the details after the final act. But now, act one of our story, The Last Voyage of the Kalani Bay, starring the distinguished American actor, Edward Arnold. A hundred years ago, down around New Orleans, Captain Dennis McKee, skipper of the brig Killarney Bay, cut quite an outstanding figure. For it was said that the venerable captain in 30 years at sea had turned back from no man, Jean Lafitte included. And wherever he was, a crowd followed, particularly the children who worshipped him as a hero. That I can vouch for, without being too unseemly. That morning there seemed to be twice as many as before as I headed down to where the Killarney Bay was anchored. The jangling of the children began to get on my nerves a bit, so I threw them a handful of coins and shouted, Off with you! There was a whoop as they scurried this way and that for the money. All except one, a measly lad of about twelve who stood watching me closely, tousled hair and fine brown eyes and all. And then he spoke. Captain McKee, sir? Aye, lad. What's wrong with you there? Why aren't you after a coin for yourself? I don't want it, sir. I want to talk to you. Well, then what is it you want to talk to me about, lad? Come out with it. I should like to hire out with you, sir. (laughs) Well, now, that's a good one. (laughs) And what would you do, boy, if I was to sign you on? Well, sir, I I could keep your clothes neat. I I could bust your shoes and keep your gold chain shiny bright. Well, now, that's right. Nice, my lad. And I dare say you could. Except when I go to sea, I wear anchor chain for me watch fob here. You do? Sure, lad. And I have mermaids to scour me cabin and keep my clothes clean. Well, you're joking me. Ah, that I am, my lad. But take no offense. I'll tell you what. What? If you intend to go to sea, you must get built up. You're rickety, my lad. Perhaps I am. But I'm very strong. Ah, you're a pipsqueak if I ever was to lay eyes on one. The skinniest lad in the harbor. You must eat good food, build a bone and muscle. That I'll try to do, sir. That's the lad. And when you do, then you can hire out. And you can tell whoever you talk to that Captain Dennis McKee said he was meant for a sailor if ever one lived to breathe. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, off with you, lad. Get along now. I boarded the Kalani Bay, and both my first mate, Mr. Carson, and myself noticed a pair of wistful brown eyes that followed us from the shore. It was a good eight hours, and after sundown, before we were away, headed for Naples with a stop at Charleston to trade some cotton for tobacco. This is soft water deck and a sandy shore. Oh, Jenny, I miss you so, miss you so. Oh, Jenny, I miss you so. But I'll soon head back by the smartest pack with a mermaid or two. Ah, that's what made life worth a living. A good ship under your feet, the breeze in your hair, and a hand with a turn for a song. Well, we were a good day out of New Orleans. I was in my cabin when there was a knock on the door. Come in, come in. What is it, Mr. Carson? I have a stowaway to report, Captain. A stowaway? It's me, Captain McKee. Well, shades of the devil. If it isn't a pipsqueak. Aye, aye, sir. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty, are you? I like the gall of you. Are you aware, lad, of the penalty for storing away? A smart flogging at the mainmast? I'm not afraid, sir. Well, I don't believe you are. Now, how in the devil did you get aboard, lad? Well, I bought myself a boat last night, and I climbed on. Oh, Mr. Carson. I see. What sort of a watch are you conducting that would allow this to happen? I'll uh, speak to the men, Captain. And you, lad. Don't you have people in New Orleans? Not the care, sir. This is a fine kettle of fish. Well, Mr. Carson, 
You who haven't got a hand that can keep a watch. It's too late to turn back to New Orleans. That it is, sir. Well, put the boy here off at Charlestown, and in the meantime, give this lad a taste of the sea. Take him to the galley, and set him to work scrubbing the pots of the pans. Aye, sir. Well, it was amazing the way that pinch of a lad went down to working and scrubbing the pots of the pans till they shined like emeralds from the blessed shore. And all the while a whistling and with a smile as pretty as you please for every hand on board. We were three days out of New Orleans, headed for Charlestown, when the breeze freshened, and the sea came up a bit, and it began to get a mite rough with the breeze grown to wind and cold. I was below for a cup of coffee. Mr. Carson was with me. He's roughened up a bit, Captain. Yeah, uh, that she is. Where's the lad, Mr. Carson? Yeah, he's on deck. And what's he doing on deck in this weather? He's getting his belly acquainted with the gunnel. <laughs> the lad is a touch seasick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hard on the pinch of a lad. Get him down here, Mr. Carson, where it's warm. Now, don't spoil me cabin floor, lad. Use the bucket. Aye, sir. Now, aren't you sorry you came, lad? No, sir, I'm not. All this bobbing and pitching around, you hadn't anticipated? I'm glad. All this rolling and thumping that turns your stomach inside out. Well, you can't make me feel sorry, sir. Well, Captain, you look a little green yourself. I do? Oh, nonsense. Well, what you do, sir, you look green. <clears throat> Tis the power of suggestion. Never in 30 years at sea have I ever so much as been a hair sick. There's another bucket by the Lazarus. <laughs> I see it, lad. I have eyes. <coughs> It is the power of suggestion. And I'll tell you, lad, if you ever so much as a word of this reaches the truth, I'll be after you with a belay I will. I, I... We pause briefly from our story, The Last Voyage of Killarney Bay, starring Edward Arnold, bring you an important message. What does it cost to learn radar operation, airplane mechanics, or photography? In the Air Force, it costs you nothing. As a matter of fact, you'll be receiving that high pay from the day you enlist. And here's the best part. Under the Aviation Career Plan, you don't enlist until after you've been accepted for the school of your choice. We'll pay you to look into this. Get the details this week at your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Now, Act Two of The Last Voyage of the Killarney Bay, starring Edward Arnold as Captain Dennis McKee. Captain McKee was completely chagrined at that little episode which included the bucket in his cabin. And had I not a right to be? Never was I more ashamed to be as sick as a new hand on the first trip out. Hmm. But I'll say this for the man. Never a word got out. He kept mum when he tried so hard. It made me feel a mite sorry as to what I had to do. As on the morning, I opened my cabin door. Well, now, lad, what's going on in here? Well, I was tidying up a bit, sir, and buffing your shoes. And what about your work below? I was all through below, sir. Well, well. Now, lad, I don't want you to think you can get around me working like this. I have my mind made up. Please don't say it, sir. But I will say it. You're getting off this ship at Charlestown come to calm or high water. Please, sir. And don't I... start sniffing it on me. I won't, sir. That's a good lad. I know what's best for you. The ship was no place for a lad his age. The life was hard and he was just a growing boy and a wisp at that. Looked like a gentle sou'easter would blow him over any moment. It was the only thing to do. We were about a day out of Charleston when suddenly I heard a commotion on deck and the bell began to ring. I ran up on deck. I could smell smoke and there it was, pouring out of the after hatch. Captain McKee. What's happened there? There's a smoldering fire there in the cotton bales below, sir. We'll have it out in a moment. 
Quick with those water buckets. I see you have a line down the hole. Who's down there? I don't know. It's the lamp, sir. He was the first down with a water bucket. There's no place for a lad down there. And all that smoke, stand aside there. I'll pull him out. Hold on, sir. I'll send a man down. Hold on nothing but I'm I, the captain of this ship, for a measly hand. Stand back there. I went down into the hold and pulled the lad out. The smoke was very heavy and it was limp and white in my arms. They had the fire out soon enough. I laid the lad on the deck where the good breeze could get to him. But he didn't move. Not a hair of him. And suddenly I spoke to one of the hands standing by, watching. Steady, Cap. Aye, aye, sir. You're always rattling everyone's ears with a song. Do you know a good song? What would that be, sir? Doxology, Old Hundredth. Aye, sir. Then sing it, Snedeker. And sing it like you never sang it before. Aye, sir. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures. I knelt there beside him. I never was one for church going, and I wished I was. But I knew a prayer, and there were other prayers spoken, I'm sure. It seemed like eternity itself before the lad moved and his eyes opened. How are you, lad? Oh, a bit fetched. There, there, now, there. Don't you try to talk too much. Uh, are we near Charlestown, sir? That we are, lad. But we won't be there long. Well, how long? Oh, long enough to get rid of this cotton and to take some tobacco. And that's all, sir? That's all, my lad. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, I did keep the lad on for the trip to Naples and many more that followed. And I guess that run from New Orleans to Charleston was the last trip of the Kalani Bay. For from there on, she became a new ship. A new ship indeed. Our star, Edward Arnold, returns for a curtain call right after this important message from Wendell Niles. The Air Force wants you young men who are interested in aviation as a career. And here's the deal they're offering you. You list the three Air Force technical schools in which you want to train. Then, when you've been accepted for one of these, you may enlist for three, four, or five years and attend the school of your choice. It's as simple as that. Get your application right away at your local recruiting station. And here again is our star... And our producer. Rare indeed is a great artist who at the same time is a great public servant. Such a man is Edward Arnold, who as one of the founders of the I Am an American Day and as head of the Permanent Charities Committee of the motion picture industry, continues to enlarge his impressive record of service to his fellow man. Ed, how do you do it all? Well, it's very easy, C.P. I'm the original Hollywood yes man. I just can't say no to anything. <laughs> well, Ed, we're <laughs> delighted you ran true to form on our request. Well, it was a real privilege, C.P., to appear for something as timely and as important as Army recruiting. But now tell me, what's on the playbill for next time? Before next week's playbill, here's the good news about Proudly We Hail. Starting the first of the year, your theater of stars becomes a full half-hour program featuring your favorite star and dedicated to give you the finest radio drama possible. We know you'll look forward to it. And next week here on Proudly We Hail, we bring you the fine actor of motion pictures, Philip Terry, in a heartwarming story of Thanksgiving. Edward Arnold appears for the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearances of all motion picture stars on this program. And until next week, thanks for listening. This is C.P. McGregor saying cheerio from Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs>